what do we really mean by the digital twin of an organization <clears throat> um, and how can we make this a reality inside the organization, gain the insights that we need from this modeling in order to be able to do uh, safe transformation confidently. So really we need to start uh, by thinking about what is an organization and we've managed to distill it down to four key entities which are the work that gets done, the data and information that supports that work or is created by that work, uh, the people who are doing the work and then the systems involved in all of that. So systems that are used by people, uh, systems that might automate work and systems supplying information. So there are two um, key aspects to this. One is really the, the flow of information through the organization as it creates assets that we require to deliver business outcomes. That's where the business value is generated. So uh, here you might start thinking in your own organization, uh, there's a load of, of work that gets done. There are actions that happen. Um, some of these might be contained entirely in business process models or other um, formula that people use in order to do their work. They require content to be able for those actions to be performed. And when those actions are performed, more content is created and ultimately you'll be delivering something that allows you to create that business value and deliver that business outcome. And you have people inside the organization, they're doing this work and they're using tools to do that. Um, those tools can automate the work as well. So this is where we might see a system having been coded to do something on receipt of the, the correct data. Um, and the systems are everywhere supplying information. And we're deliberate about using the word system rather than technology because Again, think about your own business. Um, there are probably some th some systems in use which are, are paper orientated. It's not really technology. There, there could be pen and paper. And certainly in the health sector, we see lots of paper. Uh, there are still clipboards on the end of beds, uh, which are, are handed over uh, shift change with patient notes on. So there, there's an example where the system is the, the paper, the pen and the, and the clipboard. So I want to make this concept a bit more real. Here is a piece of text, um, just a discussion that might go on inside an organization when they're considering documenting what they do. So we step right back here. This is a coffee roaster for a cafe. Um, and uh, if we read through this, um, you'll you'll see it's a it's a pretty typical kind of conversation. So we're talking about Nancy and Paul. Nancy's checking the production plan for the day, which is in Excel. It's been compiled by Paul, the, the wholesale manager. It contains a list of coffee batches to be roasted, the final weight that's been ordered and the inventory that is held inside the organization. The purchase orders from cafes and wholesale customers are um, combined when the production plan's drafted. And they do that because they don't want to roast individual batches. They want to bring them together. Um, otherwise, it's not economical to do that. So Paul just adds up the orders and a single roast is done for each coffee batch. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's a lot of content in there. So now let's think about the people, the systems, the actions and the information that is being described in this paragraph. So if we color code uh, this piece of text, it looks like this. So we can start to see who the, the people are, the systems that are being used, the content that's created, the, the actions that are taking place, the work that's being done. Now we can take this knowledge that we now have just through this conversation. And we, if we have a, a structure uh, way of being able to record that, to document it, that's digital from birth, that can be shared and understood, we can very quickly turn this into content that uh, we can use through the organization. So let's take a quick look at that. So there's the text and this is the model. Um, this is the type of diagramming that uh, Link, um, our platform, enables an organization to do. And, and at first glance, you'd look at this and go, well, that's just a, a flow diagram. We, we call this an information flow model, um, which is the, the concept behind building the digital twin. The digital twin takes that information flow, but then considers the people and systems. So we can now map the text that we have directly to the entities that we're modeling in, inside the digital twin. So here's Nancy. Um, this is the check action that she performs to produce uh, that uh, the requires the production plan. So she is um, she needs the production plan in Excel to be able to perform her work in Excel. So you can begin to see how this language is made up. Um, here's Excel, the system that is being used by Nancy, but is also the container of some of this content. Here's the compile 
work uh, that Paul does. So here's Paul and so on through the through this text. We can see the final weight piece of information that's needed. We've got the inventory. We've got the production plan that's created. Um, here's the add action for Paul. So we can um, very quickly take what's often tacit knowledge that exists in people's heads that isn't documented in a structured way. And we can bring this uh, into the model. Now, this means it's it's different from some of the other languages that Dave started talking about, because we're not filtering the content based on the technical requirement that we might have as a business analyst using BPMN or an architect using some of those other uh, architecture disciplines where we're interested in interface between systems. We're almost capturing the source content from which all of those other things can then be generated. And this allows us to follow a, a, a different process inside the organization.